back for it. It's uh, you know, it's, it's it's a comfort thing for them. Something they believe yeah. is always good. It's a really good enabling hero as well because against the Mars, it's so easy to steal the spear, and when moving. you have a Rubik who amplifies the uh, the stun duration Five of spells, you can steal that spear. Made. You connect it. It's such a long stun. And uh, if you can connect that onto a tier that's blinking aggressively, you also have your own setup for it as well with the telekinesis. Overall, pretty good uh, matchup for the Rubik v Mars. Cyber so Legacy now having to decide where they want to go with this draft. You'd expect them again. They're in the position. They just need to pick up a position form for Lil. Uh, Shaman is still in the pool. You've got Earthshaker still in the pool, but I think... Willow, okay, Willow, yeah, they want to go for the pairing to bring up some more team fight, allow them to take the take the fights that aggressive mode want, wants to present. You know, the the issue with Shaman Mars is not team fight orientated; it's about the objectives at that point. It's about laning phase and objectives. Let's go back to the old classic. Get the Willow, really ensure there's good team fight. Mm. I just want to see the meme, dude. I want to see the I want to see the fear into the Mars ulti. Mm. Yeah, it's a classic. It's why it's picked. It's, so easy to execute, and when ease of execution is present within your draft, it makes you more confident in certain moves you make when you don't have to be so panickety about positioning it. Yeah, it's enjoyable to play, but it's a nice underlock pick. Again, oh, it's so good to see aggressive mode back in their, back in the comfort of their, their drafting style. Yeah. I mean, today, it was kind of disconcerting that the games that they were losing, it was just like really questionable drafts, and yeah, the Underlord Aura Buyer allows for that tempo in Shadowfiend. He's been Great. buying Blink Yules in every game, so not the tanky guy that can really be that frontline. He's more going for kind of that big pickoff. So Underlord bridging the, the, the lack of tankiness within their draft that they have lacked as well in previous. But not discrediting that, Cyber Legacy has a really solid draft as well. Um, yeah, this is looking to, shaping up to be a, not a battle of who wins the draft, but instead who actually makes the better choice in the game, which is kind of not been the story today. Today's been no, today's predominantly been draft, draft based. Yeah. Yes. And now we're finally, hopefully in this last game, aligning ourselves with a game that could be could be a real uh, clincher. We've we've always got that tenth pick though. Never forget the tenth pick. But yeah, one thing I did want to mention just briefly is that with the Shadow Fiend versus TA matchup, you usually see the team with a more active four position getting the advantage. The one who rotates in and maybe creates a kill opportunity for the Shadow Fiend or the TA. But I don't think we're gonna see that this game. One team's got the Willow, one team's got the clockwork. That's not really a hero which is going to be able to come mid before level 6 and make something happen. So I feel like it's going to be a pretty vacuum matchup, in which case you do generally favor the TA a tiny little bit. Uh, kind of. I feel like nowadays the uh, the playstyle of these heroes is very 50-50. The kill potential comes from the skill of the players, where does he get enough side blades on the TA, connect him into Shadow Fiend? Maybe he gets that 6 level first before the Shadow Fiend gets that trap into the slow. or Maybe the Shadow Fiend gets those raises, so I think it's um, I think it's very much a skill matchup, and I think Clockwork will be the the key component here because you start with the Cogs, you're going to give that Shadow Fiend some extra souls, bridge that. Like the main issue of TA Shadow Fiend was the fact that TA would have refraction and a big damage discrepancy between the two heroes, but Shadow Fiend utilizing those Cogs to get that extra damage, it kind of makes it a lot easier for Shadow Fiend. So even the rotation potential, Willow moving in with an early root potentially could make the play but again a clockwork moving in at level two with cogs and battery assault easily can set up on the tier so i think it's going to be very close to see who breaks out a lane first because it's very volatile in, in skill and getting the ricky pick a very classic aggressive mode hero is it that good we always ask that question and somehow it always pays out and you know why because he's always able to lap up those final kills and it's not going to change this game. There's going to be aggression. There's going to be damage. It's going to be fighting out objectives. And Ricky, as long as he's not the one going in first, we'll be able to clean up some of these kills. This does, to be clear, this does leave there the opportunity of potentially another Meepo game, where Palantamos, the carry player, is the Meepo player. It hasn't been banned, and it will do a lot of work against Ricky against Thunderlord in lane. Yeah, it could be a bit weird, but could overall, it could be a good pick to finish their draft and get that big explosive 20 minute timing that aggressive mode normally want to play into but cyber legacy have the stronger 20 minute then aggressive mode will have some issues yeah let's see if they want to go for it any other options in terms of uh, super active safe laners they could go for something a bit more off the wall perhaps 
I'm trying to think. I mean, they could possibly run the Lycan themselves. I, I can see it working. Not great versus it the Underlord. Currently banned, good sir. So, uh, oh, no. okay. Yeah, respect banned. Gotcha. Yep. Like, Juggernaut would be, like, the default pick, but again, that's banned as well. So, I think, yeah, I think Meepo could be the nice alignment hero here. Other than that, you don't, there's, like, the Void's not really good, Lifestead is not really good. There's not a lot of carries that look that nice in this game right now, so. You know, well, let's just take a moment, let's, let's not try and predict. Let's just enjoy it. Monkey King, yeah. Ooh, okay, yeah, okay. I like this, I like this. That hero, honestly, had, I completely forgot it existed, because in this region... They hate this hero. Yeah. I have not seen CIS pick this hero at all. But finally, it gets its pick, Resurrect Urgent. What Ooh. does Underlord not like playing against? There are two heroes. They're very obvious. Ursa and Monkey King. Is it Ursa? Mm, I, don't, I wasn't going to really say Ursa because it's not really picked that much. I was going to say Slark and Monkey King. Oh, right. Well, yes. Yeah, meta dictates Ursa is not really in the, on the menu. But sure, let's two and a half heroes. Slark, Ooh. Monkey King, and then Ursa. Hopefully it gets better one day, but uh, yeah, overall, Monkey King, solid hero, gets to play well into the, into the Underlord lane. We've seen before Underlords in a bad lane, they just skip the wave, make those big double waves, and you know what that means? It unlocks the clockwork to move freely around the map. This means he can rotate into this TA. Stop snoring me, uh, clearly that's desire, but no, this is important stuff. So yeah, so now the clockwork can free up his lane, move in towards mid and pressure this TA. And that's because the Underlord has the ability to skip. Especially because Oracle not so strong at zoning these individual heroes. Alrighty, Until he's level 3, it. that is, sorry. <laughs> Aggressive mode versus Cyber Legacy. Game number 3 as they battle it out. Cyber Legacy, they are playing for pride right now meanwhile aggressive mode they're playing for a spot of the land it is possible for them to get there still but they're gonna need a win here they need absolutely 100 percent a win in this game if they want to make it through so let's see if they can do it game number one starting now mid matchup we got the templar assassin versus the shadow fiend pretty even matchup all things considered uh thug oh wait we've got the we've got the clockwork thing this has not been patched yet yeah. What do, you what do you mean it's not been patched? This has been a time-long thing of the, the Dota community. It's been irrelevant for nearly a year. And now it's finally back and you want it gone? No, Nomad. Let it be a thing. Wait, hold up. Thug's playing the Shadow Fiend? Oh. Ooh. Ah. 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 <laughs> Don't want to be that guy, but Sunlight Shadow Fiend. I like to Google that. That's a that's a beautiful thing. But Thug Shadow Fiend. I don't think I've seen this one before. But maybe uh, recent time. Maybe maybe Thug Ricky isn't a thing. So they're just like, well. But maybe. But come on, the the the, the, the Sunlight Shadow Fiend man. I'm a big fan. He does. Yeah. We always seem to find a way to have presence unless his team has completely crumbled on side lanes. True, true, but we, we, you know, we had a bad game earlier and he's like, hey, you know what, I don't want to touch that garbage here anymore. You want <laughs> Ricky? Oh, he's playing the game, but Lil's there before him and, uh, yeah. Cute idea to go for the tricks of the trade, but, yeah. And, and then I know you're leaning with tricks of the trade as well. Oh, sunlight with the beautiful dip, dodge, duck, dive, or whatever the Navigation is. is what you're Navigation. Uh, yeah, he's navigating nah. the maze. Beautiful. Do you ever go to the amazing mazes at Legoland Windsor when you were a kid? Uh, man, that was so long ago. But yeah, I think I did. Yeah, yeah. You kind of cheat there, right? Because the mazes aren't always like perfectly aligned, so you can kind of peer, peer through the hole and just cheat. True, true. The gap in good. the fence, you dip through. Yeah, similar, similar to Willow's maze, I guess. Uh, plant most gonna start things off going super aggressive onto Skylark. That's what we expect. But this Jingu never does as much as you expect. Level one and Desire, he's looking to take advantage of this. He's chasing him down. He's got the cogs. He might actually get the kill here. One more click. One more cogs. Is it gonna be enough? Firestorm coming down as well. Plant most getting so low to eight HP, turning around. But Desire gets the right click, gets the kill. He can die now with pride, but might not even need to. He's going for the TP. What are you doing, you madman? But it's actually gonna pay off. He makes it out. Desire, round of applause for the clockwork. But he did TP all the way back to base but Skylark's now got level 2 so this is absolutely hunky dory finey dandy wandy he's they're, they're happy 
This is a great start yeah. to play in the top lane. Right, in bottom spawn. Oh, oh no! There's stuff going, going on bottom as well. Who'd have thought there could be stuff going on in multiple lane at the same time? I didn't, and that's why I missed it. Tricks of the trade over towards Lil. Lil, he's uh, oh, he's dealing with it. Um, Ricky, buddy, Ricky. dagger nice to the mate. face. Oh dear, oh dearie me. That's a double kill for Lil. Another good thing about the Mars Willow is simply once you place that root down, Mars has two spells to move the enemy hero. So not yeah. only so if he's not in the root, you can spear him through a root to do damage and stun him, and then you can also God rebuke him into another one. So so many ways to maximize damage within this lane. Yep, so if you've got a garbage four position, just say, all right, you play Willow, I'll play Mars. You can put your roots wherever you want. I'll fix it for you. Yeah, I'll do all the heavy lifting. Exactly. exactly. That's what Chappie's saying. A little bit of garbage. Just let me handle the lane. No, Lil, Lil, Lil is a beast. I, enjoy, I, mean, I do enjoy watching Lil play in these uh, kind of tier two, tier three regions because... You know, say what you want about his mentality. Ooh, calling out CIS Nomad. Ooh. Ooh. Calling an entire region a lower tier than one. Oh, <laughs> he does. He does slap in this, these these uh, kind of you know these these kind of. He's a big he's a big fish in a small pond. I feel Lil. Mm. Well, just because you say you're a big fish doesn't make you a big fish, right? <laughs> True. A degree only goes so far, and then it decays Yo. over time, right? Yo. Boy, I'm pointing I, out facts, right? I think he plays. Uh, no, but I'm talking about how he plays. I'm not talking about like the well, stuff. Dude, he's he a god tier like, player. Dude's an idiot. Like, but when you get him in your box, he's always like, he's always at the right place, no, right time. Like, he's sure a victim he's a good of his player. own genius, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Bless him. Fun to flame him though. Meanwhile, <laughs> it's easy. Set him up, put him down. <laughs> Top lane, some more shenanigans happen. Now that they've got two points in the Jingu, it starts to actually do something. But this is something I see so often, right? When people go for this Jingu mastery, level one, mm -hmm. you know, die of a hero, go, oh, yeah, I got my Jingu off. And then they start hating people. Like, oh, God, it's 14, it's 15% lifesteal and 60, 60 bonus damage. Like, it's Especially not in the, the it's not, Look at this. <laughs> it's awful. And now, uh, well, uh, yeah, Clockwork, he's, he's going to allow him to get the Jingo off here. And Flansomos, he has got the Boundless Strike, so the instant heal will be available for him if he needs it. So oh, not much well of a threat. Spartan getting caught by the root. Yo, he's caught out the dagger. Is it in there the spear? Yeah, I'll find him. Another immediate TP away from Chappie. Going to keep him nice and safe. Sunlight thinking of going for the tricks of the trade, but realizing there wouldn't be enough damage. So they will call it there. Meanwhile, we haven't paid much attention to our mid laners, which uh, is rare, but... They're having a good time. In fact, the Shadow Fiend's having an. What the? All oh, right, yeah. And, sorry, sorry, sorry. Why? Cogs, cogs, cogs. Yes. Yeah. I would say, calm down. <sighs> what <the> cogs? <sighs> so he's probably sitting around on eight denies because normally you go to him with 11, 11 denies. Therefore, he's on eight denies still. So twenty-five for eight is still really good against the twenty-four and O of the TA. Well, meanwhile, I mean, it's just non-stop. It's pouring in down at the bottom lane. Lil dies and Bignum looking like he might be suffering the same fight, but no balance strike comes in to save the day. Desire can't chase under the tower further than this, so the Oracle shall live, shall die in today. Meanwhile, spear down in the bottom lane. Spartan gonna lift them up, throw them back, and buy Ricky the space he needs to survive here. Yeah, ten stick charge is perfectly fine. Oh my goodness, this is. Whew. My hands are getting a workout in this game. Only one kill missed so far. And it is just musical lanes right now. Everything is going off every which way. Of course, you know, Chris, shout out to you as well. But you've been, you've been dying enough to the action a bit. Game. But yeah, he's getting beaten down a bit. Curse Crown on top of him. That won't be enough to finish the job, though. So Spartan will survive. Wait, does Curse Crown even do damage? It does not. Just a stun, mate. Just a stun. Just, just, uh, just yeah, a bit of a headache. A very long build up to a stun. Bug hanging out back in the middle lane. He didn't die or anything, did he? No, just oh, I'm back to walked home. All right, fair enough. Look, do you? This is what happens. Look at the underlock. Because he can, he, he can lane top by himself. This allows the clockwork to move mid. Shadow theme. He's having good. Good little peachy old time. Got the already got the sentry ward to cover himself from the traps and Ow. TA realizing that Clockwork is missing, having to resort oh. to go to the jungle. And Spawn again. Oh just no. dying bottom mate. Wait, he catched him behind the tower, so he still hadn't healed up from the last engagement, I don't think. Yeah. And Lil just able to bring him down with a curse crown and a shadow realm. Meanwhile, up at top, man, look, going for a play onto Palantimos here. Skylight making his way over, but he doesn't actually have any health or mana, so can't really help out with that one. So, Palantimos will get himself to safety, but Desire does zone him out a little bit. 
You did look at bot lane right now. Oh, missed beyond the sunlight. Potentially could have led into a root, but again, don't see that kill potential being there simply because he or he has that early stick against the lane that wants to spam out spells. Yeah. Sunlight's still chasing here, but he's got the Curse Crown onto him, so... Oh, easy dodge with the tricks of the trade there. Did forget about that one myself. A chappy... Oh, oh my god, he's, he's got all Venom on him, but he still goes for the uh, Soul Ring play. Trying to throw out a spear, but it doesn't really do much. And, well, Willow, she's kill. Getting under the tower. No more kill potential this here. so sad for the Mars, though. A double creep wave plus the catapult coming yeah. into, the, into the tower. Mars not present. They really want to find Lil. Like, Spartan's mm -hmm. just like, we need to get... If we get Lil, then no one's going to get this XP. But Lil exactly. is surviving for the time being. Sunlight's struggling to finish the job here. He is making his way through, though, and I think Lil's days are up. Chappy, can he get the revenge kill, though? Looks like he might be able to. He can. God's Rebuke comes through. Sunlight kill. is dead. Yeah, that's huge. Meanwhile, up on the top lane, Skylark nearly dying to neutral creeps. Okay, thanks for baiting me, Skylark. Appreciate that one, bud. Oh, and he got the royal jelly and used it on himself. Now you make the uh, the safe laner and the mid laner fight over it. Yeah, and TA realizing that going mid doesn't really want to die to this quarter. Spartan, though, always in weird positions, trying to force out TP. It's such a classic move, and sometimes you have to ask yourself the question, is there ever value in doing this continuously? Sure, he's got both supports rotating onto him right now, but you're giving a little purpose in the map right now. And yeah, Big Room coming to clean it up. <laughs> Big Room says, thank you very much. Chappy though in the bot lane as well, getting jumped by the rookie. Doesn't have blink strike. So Ooh. yeah, surviving. Okay. Arena, oh, see you right. later, buddy. He's out of there. Chappy get himself to safety. Sunlight left empty handed, but still he has cleaned up the lane for himself. And now he's going to get a nice free time. And look at the courier as well. He's got royal jelly and a poor man's shield coming out to him right now. And uh, a special a shout like. out, you know, a special fuck you to the guy in my pub the other day who, when I found a royal jelly as an Ursa farming the jungle, as a dark willow, she pinged me and said, can I have that royal jelly? Because I had something in my neutral slot. She didn't. So I was like, oh, she's just being efficient, wants to give it to me. Took it, gave it to herself, ran over to our party mate who was like the mid laner and gave it to him. And I was just like, wow, I've, I've never felt more ruined in my life. Royal Jelly is like the test of who's the alpha in your team. Yeah. Like everyone makes up a, an excuse to farm it, right? Like, Oracle, yeah. oh, I can spam up more hills or Willow. I can put more Shadow Realms and then no. <laughs> everyone has an excuse and whoever sells it best gets it. Or be alpha, just take it. They yeah. can't take it back. <laughs> if you find finders keepers, that old. Just like Bignum finding uh, the clockwork. Or if Clockwork finding Bignum, or is Thug finding everybody? Looks like Bignum's the one in trouble right now, and a right click and a raise will finish him off. Meanwhile, Lil on the run isn't going to be in much danger himself here as he marks his courage safety as well. Yeah, it's all good. Meanwhile, Sunlight still playing with Chappy, but a beautiful spear back under the tower. The Willow TPing herself in. What can she do here? Does she have the damage? Does she have the reveal as well? She does. They do have a sentry on them, but Sunlight able to get himself away. He's got another blink strike available, taking a lot of hits right now. Not looking for the turnaround. Instead, he's going to jump down to the low ground with Spartan and try and get himself away. But Palantimos is now here as well. They really want to chase this. This seems... Um futile but maybe there is a reason to this as willow comes up from the high ground all right spartan might be going down here yeah with that jingu now parked and well thug comes in the real damage coming here he's here big daddy shadow feed looking to open up on these fools but can't really connect and now the ricky being beaten in palantimos can they finish the job yes they can pick him oh, the heal you. actually questionable but palantimos will die sunlight and chappy both falling in response and thugs just sitting in the arena i am the champion but pikachu coming in to challenge his championship oh, and now oh those oh, cogs no. what are those cogs they are not what they're looking for. Thug stuck, killed off. Pikachu got a clockwork on top of him, but this is just more food into the TA machine. Keeping on chasing him down. Desire trying to run to the high ground, but they've got all the vision they could possibly need in the world. Plus a root, plus ooh, nice cogs, but no. Lil finishes the job, finds a Shadow Realm hit, and they're even going to farm up his cogs just to grab salt in the wound. And now it's going to be aggressive mode, losing out pretty badly in this river fight as six heroes die in total over this absolute carnage of a 10 minute fight. And the advantage, very, very very slightly goes to Cyber Legacy, but it is small. I think when you look at it on a player-by-player -player basis, you favor Cyber Legacy a lot more because Pikachu, exactly, probably yeah. the big winner, and well, this guy is going to start to take off now. The fight was localized in an area in which Pikachu, he can join the fight and still remain farming the Ancients. He's farmed now, I believe, two double stacks of the Ancients. Going to farm this one just in time for it to respawn. And he's well on his way to Desolator. And this is the timing that you want to play off that Deso instantly into Blink. And 
You can see how Ricky is so tank in these fights as long as he's not jumped by the Mars. Having that early 10 armor, he doesn't really care too much about this Monkey King. But hookshot coming onto the Mars bottom. This type of aggression, and this is why the Rubik V Mars is so so splendid to watch, so majestic. You steal it, and suddenly now you're the one running around with an insane stun. Of course, he doesn't have any points in Arcane Supremacy right now, so not getting the full effect of the Rubik V Mars interaction, but still pretty good nonetheless. I didn't even know it pinned to Cogs, but there we go. You learn something it does, new yeah. every day. To Fissure, to Tush Shard, to Cogs, all of these things it pins to. Cute. It's why uh, we saw it in one of the plays yesterday where the Mars ulted, but the Clockwork was able to get inside the arena and Cogs just in time to protect his carry oh, and get yeah. him pinned to the wall. Well, Pikachu, he's now got that Desolator. Making that first stop at Desolator Town. Next stop going to be Blinksville, then probably into BK's B Plaza, and then hopefully they'll win the game if, if things go their way. Cappy on the high ground finds Desire and another spear coming down, but uh, they don't have the damage inside the Fate's Edict, helping them from the magic. And now, well, double arena coming down. This is really confusing to look at right now, but Chappie running in circles and now with the fear from Thug from the low ground, pushing them in, finding a cute combo of their own, but not enough to actually secure a kill. Lil trying to TP out, Sunlight finds him, Lil reality his mistakes, but a little bit too late and will die on the Dark Willow. And uh, Arrest Mode saying, sure, you can draft a combo, but we can execute it better. Yes. That arena and fear combo from Shadowfiend and Rubik was exactly what Cyber Legacy expect to be able to perform. But no, yeah, really good coming out from uh, Arrest Mode. I just like the way that they know how to play around the Shadowfiend. And I think even though Thug's playing it, it's looking pretty good right now. It certainly is. Meanwhile, Plantamos, he's just trying to farm up as much as he can, and I actually would have liked to see the Monkey King in some of these fights, but he's just chilling, looking for his he Echo Saber. Look, he can't, yeah. he can't. Look at his items. If he, he tries to join much. a fight right now, he's literally a walking creep. We, we discussed the, the damage of Monkey King, level 1, underwhelming, level 3, pretty good. Moving on from there, it's non-existent, and sure, the Rocket Flare, stopping the... Oh. Beautiful from Desire. Yeah, he's playing really well on this clockwork, yeah. honestly. He's this is a completely different player from what we've seen in the previous games. Yeah. The Rocket Flare cancelling the tree dance, allowing him then to get that hook shot and yeah. Perfect execution. But it's Monkey King is so and you meant to pick it for a strong lane to then progress into the early Echo Saber, maybe a Diffusal Blade and try and be active, but unfortunately. He tried to make too many moves, he TP bottom to a failed rotation, and as soon as you disjoint your position on the map like that, playing next to a TA who's farming the jungle so quickly, you have no no place to farm, and yeah, Monkey King just kind of put himself in an awkward position. Ah, uh, questionable moment arena, here arena in again. the arena, yeah, we got the double coming down, and the fear comes out from the Dark Willow, killing off Spartan. Meanwhile, Mars just holding his ground with a ball walk, because he's rooted up, now making it to the high ground, and he's going to live for the time being. Meanwhile, Willow being picked up on sidelines, Lil is dead to the Ricky Clockwork combo. Who got the double damage in the end? Well, it was Pikachu who managed to run in and steal it, and now with the Desso, got to get himself away, so I might take a huge chunk of damage out from the Desso DDTA. But that is still... Probably uh, just Cyber Legacy's fight, I think. I don't know. Pretty equal, really. Well, the main thing is that fight that Ricky was able to get a little bit of gold from it, and each time you uh, each time you fight, you want the Ricky to be present and getting towards his Diffusal Blade. And also, the mo uh, it wasn't like the, the TA earned a lot from that fight. The main thing there is she's now got a Deso very close to a Blink, so it's, it's, there's a very scary timing coming up. As I hear another hook shot coming onto the Oracle. Ignum with the Fate's Edict, trying to mitigate the uh, battery assault damage. Oh no, uh, just getting him with the very point of the Spear of Mars there. Yeah. But that does come out the TP and allow Desire to be killed off, so the Ganker became the Ganky. That's ironic. Well, that's what Oracle, get that value point of Fate's Edict, you're able to just take away that battery assault, which is the main component in a Clockwork Initiation. Indubitably. Well... Lil being chased down by Sunlight. Sunlight, though, not too confident going okay. for this one. Yeah, there's a spear coming, trying to pin him to the, the tower. Meanwhile, Big being Blink chased, Blink. though. Sunlight trying to find it. There could be a TA entering this fight pretty shortly. Meanwhile, Spartan running around, not too sure what to do with himself. He's still in the arena, and they're actually going to try and press the back button on this one, but not before they kill off Pikachu. They can still commit to this TP back. Yes, they certainly will. A free trip back to the fountain. Who could say no? See, this Rubik being able to get this spear from Mars, it honestly is one of the best parts of this game. It's the yeah, TA just gets to blink, so 
isn't able to use the blink because she's already part part of the fight. But the Ruby instantly stuns her, and yeah, really good play from Ruby, being able to just prevent the TA being that explosive. It could have been really dangerous there if he didn't get the stun off. Plantamos enters this fight with the uh, Echo Saber, but yet to really find his usefulness. You know, is is this really his time? What, gonna do? what no, does he not need? At all. He needs one more item. He needs that additional source of damage. Be it the Diffuser Blade, be it. Just nothing looks good right now for him. He just mm. Monkey Kings are meant to be the one setting the tempo, but exactly, it, it's hard to do that when you're being ran at by such a beefy lane. Like he's never going to kill the Underlord. He's never going to kill the very soon to be BKB Shadow Fiend. Ricky's way too elusive. Clockwork's pretty stubborn, and you're killing a Rubik. Then, <sighs> congrats, mate. The Rubik's probably done his job. So, yeah, it's a rough one for Monkey King for sure. As Lil gets picked Spons up again in the top fun. lane. Yep, he is dying and dying and dying and dead once again. It's not a complete stomping, you know, and only 2k gold advantage, but oh, the momentum is starting to play out right now. And yeah, he has found this Mars, is, doesn't have a teammate with him just yet, but because he's playing so aggressively, <laughs> like all of Cyber Legacy are just like, yeah, we, we don't want to go for this. And this is going to mean it's two kills straight away. And what actually, oh, Bigman just got triple raised or... Yeah, he was just inside the river. So if you uh, have a little, little butchers here. So Bignum was standing uh, here. This is Oracle. And then Shadow Fiend came here and then went pew, pew, pew and killed him. Yep, there you go. Pretty accurate. Meanwhile, they're into Roshan. Shadow Fiend, Spartan, and Sunlight grabbing up together. Got the anti armor of the Shadow. Uh, okay. That doesn't protect you from Roshan's bash. Maybe you didn't know that. Anyway, uh, Roshan being taken down, uh, about pretty, pretty easy, pretty easy. Moment of silence for BKB. We've seen this, we've unfortunately seen this at least two times now in the CIS uh, parry match uh, league. Yes, the league of misused BKBs, as it is known colloquially amongst Dota players and fans okay, so the alike. Smoke from oh, Cyber the, Legacy. The trap from Pikachu. Oh, boring. The garbage trap. Oh, Spartan, Ooh. gonna be a real target here, and one more hit will do the job, but he can't time to find it as the lift comes out. No, my balance strike gonna finish the job. Meanwhile, Desire cannot do much from the high ground. Meanwhile, Thug, he needs to get himself away. He's under vision here. Don't stay for the golems. Do not stay for the golems. That is 11 gold, Thug. You do not need that. And he does remain disciplined. Meanwhile, Sunlight. Oh, Ricky, calm down, bro. You don't need this media. Oh, thank you. They're looking, they were looking. Well, yeah, did he boundless strike there in the end? He didn't, okay. No, no, no. He still gets away, but yeah. You know, it's weird to be the cat, uh, sorry, be the mouse when you've got the Aegis, but you, you do have to um, when you're missing one hero. You know, they find that nice little little pick off. There's no sense trying to ram yourself into a 4v5 fight only to lose your Aegis twice and then completely throw away your advantage, you know? Yeah, it's all you know, numbers game. When you get a pick off, you want to flood to the enemy side of the map, really punish them in this middle portion of the game. Ricky, a little bit slow on that smoke screen. A little poops himself, pops the, uh, does have time to pull off the Shadow Realm and then TPs himself to the safety. Nice reactions though, to be fair. Indubitably. And the Underlord Four... build again, Atos, yeah. again in the second game. I really like this itemization. You go for a little bit of catch and then you start building for the auras. And then eventually getting that halberd that he's just put into his quick buy. So he's always in our presence within these uh, in these fights. Yeah, plants most. He's been. Oh, as I here. say that, instantly yeah. gets to catch on to the monkey king. This is pretty big. Thug coming over as well, but he does manage to get off the jingu and the blood. Ooh, no, it doesn't matter. Let's not talk does about the hook though. Matter. Yeah, that was um, you know, just just wanted to say hi to his bud. Wanted to bro down with uh, with Thug. Who wouldn't? This time, uh oh, Dark, Dark Willow popping the wrong spell and <laughs> tried to uh, pop the um, Shadow Realm, but instead got the Bedlam off. Oh well. Happens. That's free kill for Ricky. That's what he was looking for before. I'm guessing there's no TP. No, no TP on the uh, Willow this time around, so. I, guess, I don't know, I guess it was an active choice to be like, you know what, I'm not going to live here, so I'll just try and get as much damage as I can before I die. Mm -hmm. Try and. Don't, just never give up. Rule one of Dota 2. Never give up. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Radiant structures are fortified. 
GTA. Oh and my god, this root combo is disgusting. It's eight seconds collective off root, and it's just so hard to play into. And now TA, she is experiencing. Spartan? Yeah, they've got it. Oh, there we go. Desire comes in fine. Thank you. Thank hey you, guys, Desire I'm here. Don't attention. worry. I'm the real support and the real initiation. Mm. Desire doing everything right now. He is a man with a plan, with a hook shot, and he's grand. He's, he's, he's doing it great. Middle tower okay. is under Instant attack. smoke. See, this is what I mean. You get that pick off, you want to flood the map. You want to just try and take control. Make sure they can't farm up during this downtime. And Dyer have to respond. They're, they're man down. They have to walk back. Sit inside their base. Monkey trying to quickly push out as much as he can. And Radiant, they're not scared of anything right now. Oh, man. He's going for a BKB. I mean, it's going to help him exist in these fights. He can be a factor. But at the same time, it's just, I think he's still going to feel so impotent, you know? Very flaccid Monkey King. Well, like all things, they take time to come online to get big. So maybe he's just working it slowly. True. He True. hasn't got the right material to, you know, really convert that kind of flaccid state he's currently in. We'll see if they can uh, keep him down there or whether they're uh, going to make any mistakes and give him the opening he needs to come back into this one. But that's what he needs. He, need, he needs an opening. He needs a mistake. He's actually going for the Maelstrom next. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, he, he realizes like he's now got his defensive item. He needs to be able to scale right now. Look at his net worth. 9.5k. Oh, another, ooh, another hook onto the TA. Yeah, but she manages to get the blink. Ooh, yeah. doesn't quite break through the fraction. Had two more charges, two more instances of damage, and they would have been able to take down that Templar Assassin, but it wasn't there, therefore she does get the blink. Nice heads up from Pikachu, though. But he's still, he's still coming look at forward. The, look, the minimap, right? Look how aggressive. The Underlord's showing top, pushing out mid as well. That play, even if they connected, I don't think it would have converted straight away into a kill, simply because Underlord was very present top, therefore Cyber Legacy would have fully committed to that fight. So I'm kind of grateful... The refraction was in play because I think Cyber Legacy actually could have um, could have easily turned that fight. I say grateful, I'm not showing sure bias, but could have been I disastrous. Like to, uh, I, I, you know, I am sometimes a little bit biased towards the losing team because mm. you know I like I like close games. I'm an underdog yeah. supporter. Well, I was technically uh, biased to rest mode there, but. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm down for a big comeback story. That's true. Uh, meanwhile, Skylark is uh, in some trouble. The arena's coming out, but they've got the lift to stop the spear to follow up as well. Skylark just kind of enjoying his time in the arena. Enjoying the, the spotlight, but look at that hook shot cutting through the pack, finding Mars the backline, and now with the Requiem coming in over the top of the two BKBs from Pikachu and Plantamo. It's going to allow them to chase down Skylark here. And Skylark, well, he's not going to die. Yes, he is. A bundle strike will come through, but now Thug arrives, doing the damage to the Monkey King. Monkey King needs to get himself out. Meanwhile, the backline of the fight, Desire and Sunlight up and able to find Bignum and Lil. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, Palantimos and Pikachu able to get their way up to the high ground, get themselves out, as is Chappie. So they do lose their supports. They get themselves an Underlord in trade. But what happens next is what really matters. And the TA dying is not what they need to happen. But no. she's got no BKB. She's got no defensive capability. The Amanda Strike, she's trying to come back, fight Ooh. into Thug, but can't bring this down. That can't AC. get the kill. Sunlight coming in deep, but unfortunately, it's not going to do enough here. And Skylight just sitting on the front lines. He's got these Atrophy Aura stacks doing work for him as he's happy to just sit here and be an absolute burger on the front lines. Oh, and all of a sudden, and everybody just well. descending onto Palantimos, the very wrath of God onto this Monkey King right now, and he is going to get smited from on high. Desire gets a kill. The tower is starting to fall, and the tier 3 will drop. Barracks exposed. Cyber Legacy one fight, and all of a sudden, the things are looking from bad to worse as Sunlight dives in deep and finds himself Bignum. Oh, Lil, Chappie, the two heroes left to try and defend from this one, but what can they really do? I mean, luckily, the cores, the big right clickers are pretty low, but Thug, he's actually got a Spirit Vessel on him and he's going to be able to heal up. And now the right click's coming in. The real right clicks I'm talking about. The Shadow Fiend is here. He's got that Presence or Effect building. So the barracks do melt under his presence. And that is going to be a beautiful chain of events for aggressive mode. Exactly what they needed. Yeah, this uh, buyback from the Underlord. That initial start of that fight was completely down to we're trying to jump underlord the tankiest guy in the game. You eventually kill him, committing both your BKBs. He instantly buy back utilizes the fact that he has the dark rift gets back into the fight and yeah this atos and root you you just can't show as soon as you turn the lane you're gonna get rooted you're gonna get jumped you got all this catch from clockwork cook and the ricky blink so a yeah, really good plays from progress mode again they're coming back to their strengths utilizing buybacks what won them so many games in this uh, league but underlord now completely out of position 1v5 and he is dead and then the die back 100 seconds with no underlord roshan if he spawns yeah. soon 
you know, 10 seconds we'll is find minimum out respawn yet. time. This could be something. And boy, I'm going to guess the Cyber Legacy need it. 20. Go. Uh, 35 seconds. Oh, Two I minutes. I'm technically what? right, you because you know that's how it works. Because I'm closer than exact you are, bets right? only. So between me this and is, you. This is right? a lottery system. Exact <laughs> bets only. F10K, F10K. Oh, well, imagine mm -hmm. if we uh, treated the lottery as if it was a bet, right? Like, uh -huh. you know, if you said, like, oh, I'm entering the lottery. Oh, right. So uh, you've got, you know, you're entering a raffle where it's like one in, you know, one in a million. Because you're basically just choosing a random number, right? That's what lottery is. Yep. Oh. I don't think it would be as popular as you said. I'm not Random really, I'm not really a betting man myself, you know. I'm not. I'm not about the idea of putting, putting all money into. Not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that. I'm not that alpha with my money. Well, I for one love betting, especially when you go to paramatchleague.com. No, I'm just kidding. Jesus, how much are you paying you to say that? Man? <laughs> Nothing. That's why I stopped saying. It. Oh. <laughs> but you said the dot com. You, you finalized the URL. Well, I don't know the URL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a very good spokesman, but um, uh. I mean, Paramatch do do a lot in esports. So I mean, they sponsor a few esports teams. So I am very supportive yeah. of Paramatch, of yeah. course, running these leagues too. They are uh, supporting the CIS team, uh, or local organisations, and that's what yeah, yeah, yeah Western a lot of teams there. they do lack, right? That that support of big sponsors, but ow, them dead, deleted, adios. Yep, Sunlight, he makes the jump, he's got this Orb of Destruction, he's got the Diffuser Blade, and he's got the Manta Star, and that's all he needs to take down this Oracle time and time again. Despite the dieback on the Underlord, it doesn't really get anything done. They are back and in full fighting force aggressive mode. I imagine they just want to control up the map, wait the waiting game, and then go for Oshan when he's up in approximately 24 seconds. Uh oh, not this again, the roots, the chain roots onto the Monkey King, and now it gives them time to TP in, the clockworks here, he's got the lockdown, he's got the damage, they've got him cared to rights, Monkey Court, and, well, Sunlight find themselves in a Phantomos, and this, this Atos has just done so much work, Skylark, like every single time he finds a hero, throws down a pit of malice, throws down the, uh, the rod of Atos, gets the double root, allows people to TP in, and then, dead. Getting cores every single time with that. And again, they get this pick off and look Whoa, at this motion. Spotted up onto the high ground. high ground. Yeah, they're Mad just running in. Lad. They... Respect the buyback though, Monkey instantly buys back. The arena is there though, and it's actually caught out the clockwork and already killing off Spartan. So it's a pretty good start to the fight here. If they can finish off Desire at the very least, and they can. Battle Strike comes through. Thug realizing, yeah, no, this isn't our fight. TPing out, but they've all TPed away, and Roshan is up. Cyber Legacy, they want to take this one. This might just be on the cards for them. They're moving in. Palantimos so is back. Already TP back. Yeah, so he had the boots of travel under, so he can always join the fight. And Rubik does have buyback. I think this is going to be very risky. I'm sure they've. It's so quick though. <sighs> It's so quick. If they you wanted to do this, they had to make the decision immediately. They haven't done that, and now I think this is going to go the way of Cyber Legacy. They have seen this now. Sunlight's making its way over. He's throwing in the smoke. This is going to slow things down a lot. Plantsmoth throws down the ultimate, trying to finish this one up, but Sunlight, he's ready for the steal. Is he making a slot, oh, no. though? Isn't doing so as Skylight just gets annihilated once again. Roshan, he is going to fall. There is no steal. That is going to be the end of this engagement, and it is just Skylark throwing his life away for nothing, making the wrong decision and Cyber Legacy now grabbing an Aegis and a Cheese, throwing them right back into this game. It's still an 11k gold advantage for aggressive mode, but Cyber Legacy, they definitely have a chance here. What steps they need to take to secure this one, T? Not doing what they just did. That was... They go for an aggressive play, which is perfectly fine. They understand the monkey's dead, but the aggression has to be based around are we ready to take the fight if monkey buys back like we know he, he should have it so the fact they run up so rambo they get caught by the arena i think they got a little bit too blase both supports dying like if the clock had buyback then it's perfectly fine because you get the monkey buyback then you can test roshan but unfortunately the clock not having buyback was instrumental in their failure Oh, uh, shot forwards here as uh, Clockwork. He's he's playing some dotes right now. Plantos on a treat. Do they have anything to cut him down with? They don't. No, there's no way they fight here. Underlord's still dead, and uh, it's Ricky. He likes playing off of the pickoffs. Oh, nice spear jumping forwards onto the Rubik, and they've got him caught dead to rights. More than enough damage ripped through his defensive, but Sunlight has jumped in the back lines, found Bignum. They're pinging him out. They want to try and grab him, but at the same time, Thug is just pounding into Chappie on the front line. He's trying to moonwalk his way to safety. Pikachu can pop with the BKB. This is an awkward fight here. Pikachu out of mana as Sunlight is just threatening the back lines, meaning they can't actually commit to anything here. Requiem's being used. Plantamo's just taken to the front lines. He's got that. Jingu ready, but meanwhile, it looks like it's going to be an attempt at a back away here from Cyber.
Cyber Legacy, and a successful one it might be, provided they move oh, now. The whiff oh, again. dear, they Thug's found the monkey on the trees, the but... Way. Damn it, Thug, get that booty. It is fine, but get it out of the way. You don't need to shove it in our faces like that. Desire, though, unfortunately, he's started to kind of struggle with these hook shots later on in the game. We saw one or two struggles earlier on, and again, it does seem to be a bit of an issue, but... You know, Cyber Legacy, yes. they are forced off the enemy side of the map. They're the team with the Aegis, and to see them play so cowardly definitely suggests that this is not a comfortable game for them still. They are feeling this 11k gold deficit. Just the fact they can't convert the Aegis into uh, kind of uniforms aggression. They might be looking to make a smoke play now. I think it's just the fact that this Mars has gem. The Ricky is having to play off the uh, on the fringes of the fight the entire time, which is... One of the main factors in why aggressive mode aren't able to just walk over these fights, but in the last like five, six minutes, we haven't really seen aggressive mode grouped up correctly together. It's been like we've gone for a pickoff, we get we then try and continue the fight, but it's hard to say that they've actually had nice clean fights, but this is gonna be the defining moment right now. Trying to take over an area of the map. They don't actually have any vision moving into this smoke, so it's gonna be very dangerous. But... Yeah, jump uh, jumping forward. They're trying to bring down the Willow, but the false promise is going to come out in time. Sunlight trying to find a different target, but he's a little bit lost and now surrounded. He's in trouble. They're going to be able to take him down. They trade Chappie for Sunlight, which is going to favor Cyber cheap. Legacy. And now they can look for something. But Skylark, he's got the TP out. Do they have anything? No, they don't. See you later, boys. The taxi arrives. Everyone gets in. And that is a five star river right there. Yeah, Ricky going right to the back of the fight there, thinking he could be super aggressive. But Ricky's so squishy. Like. Sure, got fair, armor, he's done that every time so far and gotten away with it. You know, he's able to threaten the back lines. However, this time he doesn't get the target he jumps on. That's a big difference. Usually he jumps on Bignum, kills him instantly. He jumps on Lil, kills him instantly, but not anymore. Lil's got this uh, this Yules. It becomes much harder. And obviously you've got um, Oracle, a little bit of an easier target, but positions himself mm. very defensively. He knows what's going on. So I don't think you're... I, yeah, I agree with you. Ricky can't play this way anymore, but it was a winning strategy. He didn't change it, and now he suffers the consequences. 20 more seconds in the grave. Cyber Legacy, they're trying to find something here. Nachi on top of Desire. That's a very big jump from Palantamo, so they're going to follow up on this one. They've got a nice two-man boundless strike, but they can't seem to follow up. And now, well, there's a hookshot coming forwards and pushing him down the cliff. Giving. He's separated from his team, but no, Pikachu jumping down to join him. And now Palantamo's trying to fight up, popping that cheese to keep himself nice and healthy as they'll jump forwards the Thug. Now they turn around, and they've got Desire on the back lines. He's going to drop. Meanwhile, they're trying to slow them down. Ricky is back. He can come over to this one Thug. Not having that BKB, but does have the Satanic and drops a lot of damage onto Pikachu. They're going to throw out the Fortune's End nice and early and the False Promise onto the TA. Meanwhile, the back lines, Ricky jumps in, but immediately stunned up. He could be in some trouble, but nice jump to the low ground. Meanwhile, the Red Queen comes out, but Skylark's still in trouble, but the Envy's going to save him. Pikachu trying to fight up here, but he's got the Aegis, so it's not really a worthwhile trade. Chappie will die, though, however, and if they can zone out the rest of Cyber Legacy before the TA respawns, then it could be big. Let's see what they can do. Palantimo, so he's coming on in. He wants to try and save his TA. He wants to try and make the survive, but TA, she's just taking two no. Much damage. She is going to die. And it looks like Monkey King's following her to the grave. That is two heroes down. No buyback on the Monkey King. Down goes Bignum as well. And able to save his cause. And that is going to be a buyback on the TA. But with three heroes dead without one. Aggressive mode. They spot their opportunity. They're going for the jugular now. They're running down this middle lane without a care in the world. Look and see if they can finish this one up. And I think T they might just be able to. The Mars is going to respawn in time. It'll be a three on five. It's a really tough ask for Cyber Legacy to defend this one. But at the same time... I don't know, yeah, 47 I... seconds of Bignum? Yeah. Maybe like they just they, go for the Megas. They win their fights when there's the Monkey King ult that they can play within, but they put the fight in such an aggressive area that they didn't even need to use that many buybacks in aggressive mode, only having the one on the side of, from Spartan. And when you're playing close to your towers, uh, it's so much easier for Radiant to fight. So Cyber Legacy just overstepping the mark, maybe trying to force it a little bit too much. You've got to give them respect for trying, but eventually when you condense the fight in such a small choke point you're gonna get a lot of damage out and especially the ta feeling confident jumping in with the ages but as soon as you die with the ages don't have bkb you are gonna die to these roots and it's so easy for them to fight oh my TA god again, TA, what off. is she doing here this is just a play straight up bad positioning though three heroes stun oh. all right yeah. saved by the willow um i'm not sure who was cursed crown there and decided to walk into her entire team but but they can know, now just thanks. go bottom but like you have AC on oh. Shadowfiend, the level 15 talent. Like, the building's not so quickly. Yeah, Additionally, Monkey King's gonna come back Auras. 15 seconds. Maybe they try and start a fight before the barracks fall. Maybe they accept the Megas. Let's the see megas. what happens here. 
Skylark chewing through the barracks. They're gonna just try and finish them up and get themselves out. Yeah, this is this is so cute. This is so cute. Oh, the sunlight though. What the? Um, he's Rambo. missed the taxi, but the GG's been called one, so whatever. Big oh, okay. <laughs> sunlight. What a player actually. He's like, no, you know what? I don't need to leave. All I need to do is jump in, kill the Oracle, and they'll call this game. I'm telling if I you. I kill Bignum one more time. Yeah, he's gonna rage it. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, um... Genius. <laughs> No, I think aggressive mode, they, for the start of this day, they look really shaky. They did not look clean there. Their drafts were all around the place. They they did, in fairness, they were playing to Hellraisers, which were probably one of the, the, the second best team in this qualifier below VP. So, yeah, their, their drafts in the start of the day just were not there, really shaky. But then, coming against Cyber Legacy, a first game, pretty shaky draft issue as well. But they got the reset. They got game two, game three, and yeah, they were able to turn it around. Yeah, that certainly will do. And that's going to put an end to everything for today's Paramatch League Season 2 um, matchups and aggressive mode. Finding themselves an opportunity to possibly make it to the Lions yeah. Finals. It's them versus Fly to Moon for that final spot. And guess what? That game is going to be coming up tomorrow at 2 p.m. I have no idea what channel it's going to be on. Um, I have no idea any information about it or anything. You know uh, the I... important thing, though? What's that? Sorry, it's the important thing is it's tomorrow. Aggressive mode have to two zero. Yes. If they lose one game, see you. Fly to Moon qualify. Much so, easier anyway. for Fly to Moon play that series as well because they exactly. don't have the pressure. You know, they 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 mm -hmm. just need to coast Win through one with one win. That's all it takes. Yeah. The other team, yeah, the pressure's on them. So it's going to be an interesting one to watch. See how the mentality holds up. See how the mental fortitude holds up. I'm excited to watch that one. Might be cast. I don't really know. Maybe we're casting it. Maybe we're not. I'll find out. If uh, if it's I know it's not on this channel. Um, I've I've had I've heard confirmation that it's not on this channel. So, yeah. Um, keep an eye out for it. And uh, we're gonna see you guys tomorrow. Either way, uh, either in the chat or uh, as casters. But yeah, thanks for watching today's games. They've been a lot of fun. Uh, just to recap you on all the scores of today, our schedule was Hellraisers versus Aggressive Mode, where we had uh, Hellraisers taking them down in a clean 2-0 and securing their place in the LAN playoffs. Meanwhile, Fours played off versus Fly to Moon, and uh, that one was Fly to Moon able to take the victory over Fours in that series. Meanwhile, Cyber Legacy played off versus Aggressive Mode, and uh, this series was a 2-1 to Aggressive Mode. So, some fun games coming up today. Um, and yeah, we enjoyed them a lot. If you enjoyed our casting, please do let us know and throw us a follow on Twitter. But for now, it is going to be goodbye. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you next time.